So imagine this, you are a filmmaker, a videographer, a cinematographer, and you're running a business or you're doing it for fun, and you do everything. So you're in charge of planning, you're in charge of um, getting your talent, you're in charge of shooting, you're in charge of editing, you're in charge of color grading. And let's say that you go through the entire process perfectly, you plan on everything, the shoot works, works great, the edit comes out just fine the way that you planned it, and then it's time for color grading, right? And you are colorblind. Um, and so you have to now go and color grade a footage, make sure the skin tones are perfect, make sure everything else looks good, but you don't really know for sure because you're colorblind. How do you achieve good color grading if you're colorblind? Well, I'll tell you that story because that's me. <laughs> I, I am the one who is colorblind and I do everything myself. And typically my workflow is actually sending my finished product to my wife who um, isn't colorblind and hearing um, her tear my stuff apart um, and the color grading and telling me how to fix it and stuff like that. However, when it comes to skin tones, there's a nice kept secret within the editing software that can help you out tremendously and make sure that your skin tones are perfect every single time that, that you color grade. Um, and so let's jump into DaVinci real quick. And this works for all editing softwares, um, but we'll look into DaVinci first and we'll see um, how this works and exactly how it's done. So let's, let's hop in. Sweet, so the first thing that we're gonna do is you wanna go into your color tab. Um, and whenever you go to your color tab, you'll have your scopes down here. Uh, or wherever you want to place them. In other softwares, if they don't appear, you can go to um, like Windows settings or something like that um, at the top toolbar, and then you'll you'll be able to see like Lumetri scopes, or I'm not sure what it's what it is in um, Final Cut. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure what it is in Final Cut. But anyway, here and you want to find your scopes, and the first. The next thing that you want to do is you want to find your hero frame. Um, so scroll through your footage and find something that, that looks good. So I'm going to stop right here. And this is going to be my hero frame. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to vector scope. Now the way that vector scopes work is, um, so it's just like a color wheel. So you have red here, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow that goes all the way around. And the farther that line is, this little thing, is away from the center, the more saturation within the image that you have. Um, so if it's pulled towards the green, it'll be more green. And the farther that you go to that green, you see it moves farther away because it's more saturated. And so um, that's how you read the, the uh, vector scope. And um, the next thing that you want to do is make sure that you have the skin tone line enabled. So within DaVinci, the way that you do that is you click on this little um, settings tab and you'll see show skin tone indicator. So that's going to that's going to show that. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just select your skin tones. Now, if you're um, Within the within DaVinci, and you're wanting the um, you know the background and stuff to look differently and stuff like that, you can use a qualifier. Um, but however, we're just gonna let everything just looks you know naturally how it how it would in camera. So I'm gonna go to Window, and I'm gonna take my little selector tool, and I'm gonna select just the skin tone. I'm just gonna draw something around that. And so now just the skin tone is selected and we, if we look back down here, we see that this, this little uh, line is coming off and that's, that's what the skin tone is right now. And because we have the skin tone line enabled, what our job is or what our goal is, is to get our image to land right on that skin tone line. Um, if you're a little off, it's fine, but you want to get as close as possible to that. And the way of doing that is you can use tint and temperature, you can use your color wheels, however you want to do it. Um, they both will give you all, you know, great results. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tint because I see that I'm green. I'm more in the green side. 
I'm gonna take that tent, I'm gonna pull it more towards magenta. And so as I start going, you now see that it's perfectly on that line. Actually, let me, let me back up. Let me add a new node so that way we can just see what the, what the node is doing. So I'm gonna add a new node. I'm gonna do the same as that thing. I'm gonna select the skin tones right here. And so now that we have that, I am gonna take my tint. I'm just gonna pull it more towards magenta. And that's gonna land perfectly on, on that. And if I delete this, delete this thing, if you look right here, the skin tones now are perfect. Before, they were very green, and now they line up perfect. And I can take my, you know, now I can take my tint, and I can, you know, I can make it a little bit more orange, or I can make it, I can cool it off a little bit. Um, whatever your, you know, whatever you decide and whatever route that you want to take, um, you can do that. And so that's as simple as it is, it's just using that, that selector tool, isolate your skin tones, and then make sure that they, that they line up on that skin tone line and your skin tones are going to be perfect every single time. So let's look at this other clip. Um, so I'm going to do the same as that thing. I'm going to get a new node. I'm going to select my hero frame. So I'm going to say this is good right here. I'm going to zoom in. Not that much. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to take my selector tool again. I'm going to select my skin tones. So now that I have my skin tone selected, you can see again where we're more green than, than where we should be. So I'm going to take my tent tool. I'm going to go more towards the magenta. And for this, I'm, I'm looking really, really orange as well. Um, so once again, now that I'm on that skin tone line, that orange, you can see that my line is very far away from the center. And so I'm just going to dial that back just a hair. So I'm going to dial it back a little bit and I'm going to make sure that from side to side that we're perfectly on that on that skin tone line. And now I can delete this, this window. I can zoom back out and look, before and after, before and after. Um, and so you can, you know, you can mess around with, with it however you want. Um, but in order to get those those skin tones perfectly, you just want to make sure that it's on that line. Um, and this is a a secret for um, everyone to be able to use. And um, if you know if you're like me and you're colorblind and color grading is intimidating um, because you don't know what actually looks good and what doesn't, use that skin tone indicator and make sure that those skin tones are perfect. As long as your skin tones are perfect, um, it doesn't really matter what the rest of the image looks like um, for the most part. Uh, but if your skin tones are great, then everything else is going to look pretty good as well. Um, so that's a good indication of, of where your grade is going. Um, and so that's that's going to wrap this up. Um, appreciate it, guys. Once again, um, if you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button below. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I'll get back with you um, on that. Um, and that'll be it. So we'll see you in the next one.